Elliot, what are your stance on using psychedelics for healing, revealing purposes? I didn't want to ask this because I already know how you feel about them, but I'm tempted to use it possibly under demonic attack. And I feel, feel I need to be checked. So if you're going to do it, which of course, you know, I'm not a fan of it, but if you are going to do it, you need to do it within a space of containment. That's the biggest problem that I'm seeing that a lot of times these guys are doing it with like, you know, fly by night dudes that give them some drugs. And it's like, Hey, let's do this with no actual spiritual containment, no right, no process. So I think the most important thing that you need to do is to look at who it is that's going to be facilitating this for you. I don't think it's a good idea to do it, do it on your own. Because what does it do? It unzips the unconscious. When I was working with Bob Glazier, Dr. Glazier, and I was doing bioenergetics, which by the way, bioenergetics is, I tell you, man, it's this exact same psychedelic experience, except one, you have to, you drink something or you smoke something. The other one, you're breathing. You could breathe yourself into a psychedelic experience. This is what bioenergetics was. You breathe yourself into a psychedelic experience. One of the things Dr. Glazier used to say to me though, he says, you know, after a certain amount of Un he would say it's called unzipping the unconscious. Every time you unzip the unconscious, you become more permeable. This is what happens when people lose their mind after doing psychedelics, because what happens is the ego dissolves. Part of the reason why bioenergetics and psychedelics are helpful, it can be helpful, I know it's helpful, is because the ego, which is boundaries, they don't hate the ego. These people are, oh, don't trust the ego, hate the ego. They hate the ego. These people are wrong. You need an ego because if you don't have an ego, you have no boundaries. If you have no boundaries, you're essentially schizophrenic because you can, then you can't tell the difference between the someone else's feelings and your own or the or the or the energy of an environment. Right. Like people who have no boundaries, they can if they walk into they're very highly impressionable. Right. They go into somewhere and maybe everybody's doing drugs. They may not even be doing drugs, but they start feeling high. Right. Because the ego, what happens when the unconscious is zipped, when, when, the, when you unzip the unconscious, right, which essentially is unlipping, zipping the, Z, the ego, and allowing the unconscious to arise, uh, you have no you have no protection. You have no boundaries. Also, if I, I you know, people have been asking me for the longest time, Elliot, are you going to get into bioenergetics? You're going to teach in bioenergetics. You know what? I might. But the only way I would do it is it under spiritual protection. That means prayerfully. Right prayers. And that means Jesus Christ. If you're not bringing the power and the protection of Jesus Christ with you into these psychedelic, quote unquote, healing uh, experiences, again, you can, be, like you said, you're going to be open to demonic attack. And it may even be the demonic attack that's leading to you towards wanting to do this. And I'm not saying this because I read a book or because it's a good idea. I'm saying this because I suffered. When I was doing bioenergetics, I didn't have a, the type of containment that I really now know I needed. And I didn't learn about containment until I started reading about the archetype of initiation through the work of, uh, of Robert Moore. When I started reading Robert Moore, learning about Robert Moore, who was a neo-Jungian, I came across the work of Carl Jung, and I started to understand that this deep spiritual work needs containment. That's when I started to recognize, realize why all the ritual in religion is so important because it creates a space. It creates boundaries. Rituals create boundaries. So unless you're doing this under a ritualistic religious front, you're going to be open. You're going to be open to all kinds of attack. So you decide, I'm not telling you what to do, what not to do, but if you are going to do it, this is why, this is why the church has always had exorcists. Exorcists can bring you through this type of process, but an exorcist is a bound is a, is a space holder, a boundary keeper. He's praying prayers for you before you get there. He's cleansing himself and praying prayers for himself. If you are if you do this and you are being facilitated by someone who's in a state of mortal sin, their sin can can affect you. The guy who's looting, leading you through, I think that happened to me. A lot of bad things happened to me. I don't even want to get into it. But I used, I think it was DMT or something like that. And I think the person, I know the person that administered it to me was in a state of mortal sin. 
And after that experience, I, I started making some bad decisions in my life. I don't hate to see that happen to you guys. So I don't take it lightly. I don't take using these things very lightly. There are a lot of people who have had, you know, quote unquote, good experiences. Look, that's, you know, maybe that's the, maybe that's the fact for them, right? I can't tell you. But I would be very cautious. I would take my time and I would vet the person that's going to be doing it with me. And I would pray, pray, pray. A lot of spiritual protection prayers. Prayers for deliverance, right? Jim just had a book he was reading to me before we got on a call. It was, uh, it was Prayers for Deliverance for the Laity by, by an exorcist, Father Ripperger. I would absolutely totally get that book for you. All right. So uh, all these things, but the main thing is containment, containment and protection. I will leave you with this. So I'll give you one. Uh, you should read, and it's on the reading list, The Archetype of Initiation by Robert Moore. I actually just even had it right here. I was looking at it the other day. Archetype of Initiation by Robert Moore, um, where he talks about the need for containment. And then also he's got a lot of resources in that book. He points to uh, different books on the on initiation and how our ancestors would do it. But it was never done like as an entertainment thing. It was never done flippantly. It was always done with reverence, ritual, and containment. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.